I hate to say it, but you're probably doing testing wrong. Now, if you're writing no test at all, obviously you're doing testing wrong. But even if you're incredibly diligent, making sure you write good test, getting good code coverage, and just making sure you cover all of your bases, you're probably still doing it wrong by writing too many tests. In this video, I want to talk about how you can spend less time writing less tests and getting more confidence that your code is correct and bug free. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And we're gonna be talking all about testing in this video. Now I mentioned at the beginning how you can write less test and get more confidence. I'm gonna talk about that more in just a little bit, but in order to understand how this works, we need to understand the three basic types of tests that you're going to run into. The first type that we're gonna run into is unit testing. This is probably the most common type of testing that people are used to, and that's because they're relatively easy to write and there's lots of tutorials on YouTube about unit tests. Unit tests are essentially about testing a single unit of your application. Generally, this is like a single function. So you wanna test the sum function to make sure when you pass in two numbers, it returns those two numbers added together. It's really easy to test. And these unit tests are generally small and they test a very small portion of your code at a time. Now, the other end of the spectrum that we have is something called an end to end test. And as the name implies, it tests your application from one end all the way to the other end. This means it tries to emulate essentially exactly what a user would do. This means for end-to-end -end testing, you're almost always going to have some type of browser emulator, such as Cypress, which is going to emulate your browser, and it's going to emulate users clicking on buttons, and it's just going to work as if it's a user. With an end-to-end -end test, the idea is you want it to act just like a user is using your site. That means when a user clicks a button, if it calls 55 functions, all 55 functions are gonna get run inside your end-to-end -end test, while with unit test, you would have 55 individual tests, one for each one of those different functions. Now in between those two types, we have integration tests. Integration tests are similar to unit tests in that they're meant to be testing a smaller portion of your code, but they also want to act more like a user interacting with your site. So it has the smallness of a unit test while having the actual application of an end-to-end -end test. The main thing that changes here is let's say that you have a function that calls off to an API and then saves some data in your database. Well, if you did a unit test to test this, you would need to do a mock for your database and your API call. Essentially, you're faking those things as if they didn't happen because a unit test can only test one unit in your application. Anytime that you go outside that unit, you need to mock it or like fake that it happened. But with an integration test, you just let those things happen. So your API call still happens your database call still happens. So it can kind of test to make sure all your integrations of these different components are working just fine. That's where the name comes from. So if we were to compare all of these different test types together, we can really compare them on two different factors. We have the speed of writing and running these tests, and then we have how much code this test is going to cover. On one end of the spectrum, we have unit tests. Unit tests are pretty easy to write, so they're pretty quick to write. They run very quickly, but they test a small amount of code. They're going to be a very small amount of code tested, but very quick to write. So you can write lots of them to test more code. Integration tests are going to be kind of in the middle. They are relatively quick to write, but they're a lot slower than unit tests. They run quite a bit slower than unit tests because they have to call out to APIs and databases. But since they do all that extra stuff, they are allowed to cover more of your code and generally will call more than one function at a time. So they have a little bit more code coverage. And end test on the other time, they're quite a bit slower to write. They're much more error prone. They're definitely way slower to run. But the best thing about them is they cover a huge portion of your code. So you can be really confident about a lot of different things because they cover tons of parts of your code and act just like a user is interacting with your site. Now, based on this chart, what happens is people see end to end tests. They're slow. They're hard to write. So they're like, I'm not going to bother with those. Those are a huge pain. Or maybe I'll write a couple of those. Integration tests, they're like, ah, those are kind of a pain too. Unit tests, those are easy to write, super easy to run. I'm gonna write a bunch of those. That's what happens. People write tons and tons and tons of unit tests and they're mocking out everything. All their database calls, all their API calls are like fake this, fake that, fake this. And eventually they're spending so much time faking all that information, mocking out all that data that it's actually causing them more time to write these tests than if they just wrote like integration tests for certain things. And it's not giving them the same level of confidence because let's say you have a sum function and that sum function works just fine. You have another function for divide and that divide function works just fine. But the way that you actually use these functions in your code is wrong and the way you integrate those pieces together is wrong. Well, your unit tests are not going to catch that. They're gonna be like, yep, sum function's fine. Divide function's fine. Your application's perfect. But when you integrate those pieces together, they don't actually work like you expect because you didn't do that right. That's where your integration and end-to-end -end tests come in 
If all you do is write a bunch of unit tests, you're gonna be missing a huge amount of coverage. Even if your code coverage tool tells you you have 100% code coverage, you don't have 100% code assurance that it's going to work. There's a huge difference between code coverage and code assurance or whatever you wanna call it. I literally made that up five seconds ago. It's just the assurance that your code is correct and going to run as you expect. Unit tests are great at giving you good code coverage because you can write tons of tests really quickly, crank up that code coverage number, but they're bad at code assurance because you have to mock out a bunch of things, you're faking a bunch of things, and you're not testing the integration of all your different pieces of code together. Because of this, I actually think it's a waste of time writing a ton of unit tests. Unit tests are really good for certain things, like testing a pure function, unit tests are amazing at that. The sum function is a great example of that. You give it the same input, same output every single time based on those inputs, that's what a pure function is. If you wanna learn more about it, I have a full video, I'll put it up in the cards for you. But essentially when you wanna test these pure functions or these small pieces of logic, unit tests are great for those things. Also, if you have like a really core piece of business logic you wanna test, use a unit test for that as well. Like a payment workflow, it's great to have lots of unit tests around that because that's a really important part of your application. So anything that's really critical to your application, write some unit test. But everything else doesn't really matter that much because if all the parts are working on their own, that's great, but they also need to work together. So unit test all the really critical pieces of your code or the things that are really easy to unit test, like pure functions, for example, and then just don't really write any other unit test. You can instead spend that time to write more integration and more end-to-end -end test. Now, a lot of people that share my opinion on this say that you should take that extra time and write a bunch of integration tests. And I think that's fine, but honestly, I prefer end-to-end -end test over integration test. The reason for that is because modern tooling like Cypress makes writing end-to-end -end test incredibly easy compared to what it used to be even just five years ago. They're also quite a bit quicker than they used to be, so you can run more tests, write them faster, and get it done in the same amount of time. Since end-to-end -end tests are the best way to give you code assurance, that's why I like to write tons of them because it acts just like the user. You're essentially acting like a user going onto a website, clicking buttons, scrolling through lists, entering information into fields. The end-to-end -end test is the closest you can get to real human user interaction on your site, which means that it's going to be the best for making sure your code works like you want it to. The way I like to write my end-to-end -end test is I like to think of all the different user interactions on a page. Like let's say we have a really simple to-do list application where we can create a to-do, we can delete a to-do, we can check a to-do is completed, and we can edit a to-do. We just have four things the user can do. Well, I'm just gonna write four end-to-end -end tests. One for creating a to-do, one is gonna be for editing a to-do, maybe deleting a to-do, and completing a to-do. That's all I need, four simple end-to-end -end tests, and that's gonna cover all the different actions on my site that a user can take. Obviously, a to-do list is super simple. Larger projects have more actions. So what you want to do is you want to think of all the different actions a user can do and try to write your end-to-end -end test for those specific user actions. That's what end-to-end -end tests are really good at testing. Obviously, if you're on a large code base, start with the most critical business logic, like a payment system, for example, or like a login form. Those are the most important things to make sure they work. And from there, move to the less important task, like a settings page, for example. So right now, based on this logic, we have some unit test for covering the most critical portions of our code or like the most pure functions, the easiest things to unit test. We have quite a few end-to-end -end tests for covering all the different actions a user can take on our site. And now finally, we can move to our integration test. And the things that I really like to integration test are going to be things that require lots of mocking. So if you have lots of database calls, if you have lots of API calls, or just lots of calls outward from a function that does a lot of things, those are the best things to integration test because they don't really work super well for unit testing. You have to do so much mocking of data to make it a true unit test. Those things I think are really good for integration test. And again, the closer your integration test can be to how a user truly interacts with the page, the better it's going to be. So try to make that integration test work just like a user was interacting with the page. It's gonna give you more code assurance, which is the important metric that you should be tracking. So really, I just write the integration test that I need to test all of the critical pieces of my application, as well as anything that requires too much mocking to make sense for a unit test, or that doesn't really fall into a user action for an end-to-end -end test. And with that, that's all the testing you need. As you can see, we have lots of end-to-end -end test, we have some integration test, and then we have some unit test. So you may not have the same number of tests, because if you wrote a lot of unit tests, you could write hundreds or thousands of unit tests. At the same time, it could take you to write, you know, 50 end-to-end -end tests. Those 50 end-to-end -end tests are gonna give you so much more assurance that your application is working as you expect it to than those hundreds or even thousands of unit tests, because they don't test everything working together like a user would use your site.
So if you want to start diving into the world of testing with JavaScript, you're going to want to check out my video on Jest. It's going to be linked right over here. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.